our project is done. A lot of cool features were added, image upload, pagination, connecting the different models on the backend, authentication, authorization, error handling. I'm very happy with it. Now it's time for some optimizations in our code, but also from a performance perspective. So let's dive into our project again and see what we can improve and what we might want to change to really make it deployable. I'm happy with the state our application reached. You can always do more, change more, edit more, but I'm very happy with both our backend and frontend. But there's one thing I still want to do. Right now, we have some redundancy in our code, like for example, that URL in the post service. If that would change for some reason, we need to change it in all these places. Now that's certainly possible, but not optimal. We also, for example, have a setting in the app.js file on the backend, this password. If that changes, we have to visit this file and edit it here. And if our app was deployed already, it means we have to edit our source code and redeploy, even though just some configuration changed. So this is something we can probably handle a bit more elegant. By the way, the same is true for our secret we use for creating a token. We store it here in the user.js file and in the check off file. I want to manage these things with global settings. So let's implement this step by step and let's start on the front end in Angular with this URL. Of course, we can easily manage this globally. We could add a new constant outside of our class here, which I'll name backend URL, all caps to make clear that this is a constant, a file-wide constant. And then I just grab that URL here, put it in here, and now all the places where I used this URL, I just use backend URL instead. So I used that here and I used that here and so on. So we replace it everywhere. And we can do that here since we always have that same URL. If it differs, of course, you have to adjust it. So now this is better. Now the app should work as it did before and it does, but we're managing this in a global place. Now, we don't just use that URL in the post service though. Well, we use that exact URL there, but in the off service, we have the same domain at least. We have a different ending thereafter. We have API user instead of API post, but the domain and even the API part is part of every URL we have. So we can probably enhance this a bit more. We could add a global configuration file where we have this common trunk which we import into both the off service and the posts service. And then we just add slash posts or slash users after this trunk to build the URL as we need it. Now, thankfully, we got an even better way with the help of the Angular CLI. There, we got this environments folder in the CLI project where we have the environment.ts file. And here we can set up so-called environment variables. This means these are global variables, which we can import in our files, and we can even change them for the production and development mode. Because in our case here even, we have that URL in development, but we will not deploy our app on localhost. So this gives us a convenient way of always getting the right URL for both cases, developing on our local machine, where we want to have a localhost domain, and for the deployed app when we build it for production where we want to have the URL of our, well, server where we're deploying it to. So we can now adjust our code even more. And we take that common trunk, so the domain and API, and put it into that environment folder here. There we can simply add a new key, for example, API URL, which is a string which holds this trunk. And now we just import that into the files where we're interested, like in the posts service. There I can still construct my file-wide constant, but I will also add an import. I'll import this environment object, which is exported in the environments folder and there in the environment file to be precise. I'm importing this. And now I can construct my backend URL by using environment 
API URL and then posts. And I will copy that and go to the off service and I will add it there too. And one adjustment, I don't need the post model here, but I need that environment import and my backend URL here simply has slash users. Slash user, I mean, so slash user. And now we can grab that backend URL and again, replace the parts that need to be replaced. So here I would actually say backend URL plus slash sign up. And down there it would be backend URL plus slash login. And now again, the app should still work fine. If I do log out and try that login again, this seems to be working. Deleting does not work though. Uh, the reason for that really just is that I got an error in my delete route now. If I go down, I need to add a slash here or to be precise, I can simply add that slash at the top after posts and also I could do the same for off service at the top after user. Just to be safe that whenever I need to attach some information after that part, I already have the slash in there, which is required to build a correct URL. Now deleting works again. So now we're managing this globally, which is a great first step. In the next lecture, we'll have a look at how we can do the same for the backend. We're managing some Angular information globally in Angular. For the backend, I wanna do the same. Now here, we can't use that environment file because that is really just for the Angular project. The backend has no access to this because the CLI doesn't manage this backend code. I just put it into one project so that we can easily switch files. They're not connected. But we can implement something comparable for the backend. During development, we can use a feature called node environment variables. Node.js has this feature built in and pretty much all hosting providers for Node.js applications offer a feature which allows us to inject global variables into our running Node program. Now here for the local development, we can also fake this by reconfiguring Nodemon, the tool we're using to start the Node server here. For that, we add a new file, nodemon.json, to set up some global configuration. And there we add a JavaScript object with a key named nth, which has to be enclosed in double quotation marks because it's JSON notation. And that key now can hold some global environment variables that will be injected into our running node app. And again, we will set that on the server through the hosting provider which hosts our app. Here for development, we're doing it with Nodemon since this kind of is our hosting provider here. So now we have that nth key here. It holds an object and in there you can set up your global environment variables for your Node Express app. And here I want to have my Mongo Atlas password. So for that hosted Mongo database. And that should be the password you use in the app.js file, this one. Let's cut it and let's add it to Nodemon JSON here as a value, also enclosed between double quotation marks. I also want to use my JWT key or want to store it here. With that, I mean that secret key which I'm using. For example, in user.js, this one, let's cut it here and let's go back to Nodemon JSON and then add it here. Now I got these two things stored globally for my backend. Now, if you got more things to store, you can of course do that here. I'm happy with what I'm storing in my case. Now I need to inject them into my, well, different parts of the app. And injecting is super easy. Let's start with the user.js file where we want to create a new token. Here, previously we had that secret stored. Now it's stored in that global environment file. Now for Node.js, these global variables are injected into the running Node process and there we can access them on a special object. 
the process object, which holds a nth variable, which holds all the injected environment variables. So there we will find the JWT key variable because we defined that key in our nodemon JSON config here. So we use process nth JWT key to get that JWT key. And I use that same code in the check off function therefore, where we also need that key. And of course, we don't just have that global key, we also have that MongoDB password. So in the app.js file where I need that password, there I will connect to MongoDB, the password needs to be entered here, and we can simply inject it by ending the string and starting a new one. And in between, we add process.nth dot, and then it was, let's have a look, it was Mongo Atlas PW. Let's grab that and let's access it here. And now with that, we're storing this in a central place and we're injecting it into our app. Now with that, if you save everything and you reload your app, it should still work as before, except for that it's not. If we go back to the server side log, we just need to restart that server side because we changed the configuration of Nodemon. Now if we reload this, it works again. If I log out, if I try logging in here, that's looking good. If I create a new post here, it's also looking good. If I then want to edit this post, don't change anything is working, add an exclamation mark, that is working. And if we delete it, that is also working. So that's all working again. We got no errors here as far as I can tell. And now therefore we're using these globals to have a more convenient way of managing our URLs and our global settings. We're now really prepared to not just use our app locally, but to deploy it. In our project, we got of course two ends, two parts, so to say, the backend and the frontend. Now I want to start with optimizing the backend. There we right now have a lot of logic in our routes files. So in the routes folder, posts and users. Now for our app here, this is probably fine, but it would also be nice if we could see which routes we have and which middleware they take a bit quicker. Right now we have to scroll through the entire posts JS file and it's easy to overlook a route or misread it. Therefore, I will add a new folder on the backend here, the controller, uh, controllers folder. In that folder, I will add new files, which will actually contain the logic for the routes. And I will simply forward requests to my controller actions then from within the routes files. Let's start with the user JS file here. In that file, I want to handle the user related logic. And for that, I will simply add my logic from the user JS file to that controller. However, not the routing logic. Instead, I simply just want to put my methods in there. So for signing up, for example, I'm talking about this method we are executing. So our own middleware here. I want to pull it out of the route file so that there I really only listen to a certain verb and define the path. And then I want to export that logic, that method inside of my user.js controller. And for that, I will use another export syntax, exports, and then the name of the function on which you want to export this. Like for example, create user. Then you assign a value to that exported object, so to say, to this exported property. And that value simply is the function I want to use. So in my case, the function I just cut out of the routes file, this middleware function we defined there. Now, this function uses things like bcrypt and the user model. So for it to work, we need to import that. We don't need express because that's only needed for the router, but we need bcrypt, we need the token eventually, and we'll also need the user model. We can cut all of that from the user.js file in the routes folder and add it to the user.js file in the controllers folder. There at the very top, I will add these imports. Now important, 
Here we don't need to adjust the path pointing to the model because if we go up from level two controllers, we still reach it. But if you were to add the controller folder somewhere else in a nested place, maybe nested into routes, then make sure to update this path to correctly reach that user model file again. So this is the first step. Of course, we don't just have that um, create user route here. We also have the login route. So let's also grab this function here and cut it out of our code here in the user.js file in the routes folder and export it here instead in the controller. There I export, important, it's exports. I export my user login function, let's say. This now again is just my middleware function, which I cut out. And now we got all the logic in the controller. The next step is to connect our functions to the controllers. And for that, we need to import our functions into the routes file. So here I will simply add a new constant and I'll name it user controller. You can name it however you want. I'll name it like this because I want to kind of indicate that this is a, an object which groups several things. And I'll import it by using the normal require syntax. And then I go to the controllers folder and there to the user file. And now I can use user controller here on the signup route, still as a second argument. And there I access my create user function. I'm not executing it by adding parentheses. I'm instead just passing a reference and Express will therefore register this and execute it whenever a request reaches this route. And for login, I do basically the same. I use user controller, user login. And now everything should work as before, but now with controllers in place. If we now go back to our application, we can test this by logging in with valid credentials. This is looking good. So our backend still works, but now with controllers for our user routes. Now I will do the same for the posts and definitely feel free to pause the video here and try this on your own. That's a good practice. And I'm assuming you were successful, but let's now also do it together in case you have a tiny error somewhere. I will add a posts.js file in the controllers folder. And now I will just grab all my middleware functions from the posts.js file here and put it into my controllers folder. Now for that, let's go to the first route we have here. Let's leave the multer and the check off middleware as it is. And let's simply grab that last function here, cut it and move over to the posts.js file. And here I will export a new property which I'll name create post and assign my function as a value. Now important, we of course have some dependencies we need here too. So we will need the post model to be precise. Let's cut it out of the posts file in the routes folder therefore and let's add it to the posts file in the controllers folder. So here I will add my import to the post model. Now that is the route for creating posts. We of course have other routes too, like for updating a post. Let's fetch our function here too, cut it, go to the posts JS file in the controllers folder and export update post here again by assigning our function as a value. Then let's go back to the posts JS file and let's do the same for getting all posts, cut this function go to the controller, create a new exported function with the exports keyword, get posts seems like a fitting name and add our function here. Go back to the routes, repeat the same for fetching a single post, cut this, go to the controller and add exports get post here, assign the function, go back to the posts route and repeat one last time for deleting a post. Let's cut it, let's go back to the controller, let's export this, delete post and assign a function. Now we got it all in the controllers file. Let's now import that into the posts.js route file by adding an import up there. Post controller is imported by using require and then going to the controllers folder and there importing the posts file. And now we can use that post controller in all our routes as the last argument. 
for the post route here, it's create post. And again, don't execute it, just pass a reference. For putting, it's of course update post. For getting, it's, whoops, for it's get posts. And for getting a single post, it's of course get post. And then here in delete, it's delete post. Simple as that. Now we got a cleaned up routes file. Let's see what else we can do on the back end in the next lecture. So we're now using controllers and this already makes our routes files much easier to read. Now one other thing I want to do is I want to outsource that multi logic into its own file. We don't have to do that, but technically it's a middleware. And even though we only use the middleware in that posts.js file here, and therefore adding it there is absolutely fine, we could be using it in other files too. And I really just want to have my routes in here. So I will grab all that multi related code, including that mime type constant, and cut it and create a new middleware in the middleware folder. And I will name it file. JS. You can name the file whatever you want. I will drop in the code I just cut, go back to my post.js routes file and grab that multi import, which I now don't need in that file anymore. Go back to file.js again and add the import here because here we do need it. Now, this current setup doesn't create the middleware, it just creates the config for it. So I will go back to post.js and we always use multi like this. So I will actually grab that code, go back to the file.js file and export this at the bottom with module exports equal to this line of code where I initialize Malter with our storage config here. This is what I export in my file.js file and therefore I can go back to post.js and import this. I'll duplicate the check off middleware import and name this extract file because that seems like a reasonable name. And I will import that from the file.js file. And now we just add extract file like this. And with that added, we can of course, and we have to do the same for the put route, extract file. And now all routes are really condensed and we really just have the route set up in that post.js file now. Now with all these changes, let's see if that still works. And for that, I will first of all delete all the uploaded images because we don't need them anymore. And now we'll go back to my app. And there, of course, the images will be missing now. And I will simply delete all posts so that we start from scratch. Can't delete that last post because we didn't create it as it seems. Let's quickly log in as the different user who did this. And now everything is cleared and we saw that deleting worked. Let's now create a new post. Spring is here. Let's pick our spring image and add some content. Saving works and I can see the image here. So this is looking good. Let's edit this. Let's pick a different image like tools and save that post. And now here, this also works. So we still seem to have working routes. For completeness sake, let's also try creating a new user. Works too. So now we got working routes. And with that, we got a cleaner setup on the back end. And we're now prepared to turn our heads towards the front end. What can we optimize there? With the backend optimized, let's have a look at the front end. There we got a nice folder structure already, but there's still a couple of things I want to change. Let's start by working on the app module. It's a pretty big file with a lot of declarations and imports. There's nothing wrong with that, but we can optimize this both from a coding perspective as well as from a performance perspective. It's a bit hard to read that file. For example, we got a lot of material uh, related imports here. And that makes it a bit harder to see our other imports. So it is considered a good practice to put all these material imports into their own app module or into their own ng module, I should say, and then just import that ng module into the app module. This will not yield any performance difference. It simply makes our code easier to read. 
We then will also split our app into different sub-modules though. And I mean modules for the different features of our app. For example, we could create a separate module for logging in and signing up. So for the authentication related things. And we can also put our post related things into their own module. For an app of the size we have here, this always is something you can argue about, but it is something which is a good practice for bigger apps especially, and which also makes sense for a lot of smaller apps though. So let's implement this step by step and let's start with the Angular module, the Angular Material module. I will add it here on the root level. I will add the Angular Material .module.ts file. And in there I will export a class which I'll name Angular Material Module. And I will decorate it with at ng module. This turns it into an Angular module. Now this module will only do one thing. Import things from the Angular Material package and export them again. So let's go to the app module and let's use that import from at angular material and cut it from there. Let's go to the angular material module now and let's add it here. So now we're importing everything for TypeScript. Now we need to add it to ng module. And there we can go back to uh, the app module too, grab all these now marked imports here in the imports array and cut them. And go to the angular material module and add that imports array here. So let's add imports like this and put all our imports into it. Now we want to import that angular material component into the app module and get access to all these imports. Now by default, they're not exposed to any other module. So to make them usable in another module, we have to add another key here, the exports key. And we simply add the same modules a second time. This will now import them and then re-export them. And this is really just a structuring thing so that we can now go to the app module and there we'll just add our own Angular material module we just created. This module needs to be imported. So I'll go to import Angular material module from, and now the path is in the same folder, the Angular material module we just created. With that, we can save that file. And if we go back to our application, it should work as before. We still have the material components here, but now we are actually using the slightly restructured approach, which makes it easier to read. And you can even optimize this Angular material module. This duplication is really redundant. A feature Angular offers is that you can remove the imports array and just export them and the importing will be done automatically by Angular. So with that, if we reload, it still works, but now our Angular material module is a bit shorter. Now that's the first part. In the next lectures, I also want to put my posts and authentication related things into separate modules. So with the Angular material module added, let's now move towards the posts module. And we don't have that module yet, but now I will create it. In the posts folder, I will add the posts.module.ts file. Because here I want to group all the things required by my posts. Therefore, I will export a class here, which is posts module, which we also decorate with ng module, like this. Now here I want to declare all the components used in the post related uh, world or feature. So if we have a look at the app module, that would be the post list component and the post create component. So let's cut them both from here. And let's now also take their imports, post list component and post create component. And let's cut these two. And let's go to the post module and import them there. We need to adjust the paths though. We already are in the posts folder. So this first part can be deleted. Now here we add declarations again and we declare the post create component and the post list component. This adds them to this module. The question is how do we now connect this module which explains to Angular which components it comprises. How do we connect this to the app module? 
First of all, let's have a look if there's something else we can remove from the app module. And yes, there is. For example, the reactive forms module, we really only use that in the posts module. So let's get rid of it here. And now let's go to the posts module again, add it here. So let's add our imports array and add the reactive forms module here. Make sure to also add the import from add angular forms. And now let's go back to app module, remove that reactive forms module import here. And now let's do that connection by simply importing our posts module into the app module. So here I can add posts module. Make sure to add that import path. If you now save this and go back to your app, you will actually see an error though. The reason for that is that our angular material module is now not exposed to the posts module, which makes sense. I explained that every module would just keep its context. It would not export its things into other modules. So the app module where we import our angular material module doesn't pass it on to the posts module. Now, of course, we still want to use our angular material related things in the posts module. And that's no problem. We can actually import the angular material module here too. So the angular material module now simply acts as a shared module. So make sure to add this import and add it here in the imports array. And then if you go back, you still see an error. If we go up, we see that ngif is also unknown. The reason for that is that this is actually a default angular feature, but not enabled by default. In the app module, it is enabled by that browser module, which also adds some bootstrapping. So app startup related things. In the posts module, the app has been started, but we still add another module. Let's add it at the very top, the common module, which is imported from at angular common. This adds common functionalities like ng if. And with that, if we save that and we go back, we still get an error. Now it's the problem that we can't read router link. And the reason for that really just is that we're now using router features like router link as it says, which aren't enabled here because the router module here is also just exported into the app module. And as mentioned before, things are not shared. So we want to unlock this in the post mo module. And for that, we could of course add the router module here. Add it like this, save this and go back and have a working application again. Now if I log in like this, I can edit this, go to this page and it works as before. I'm not authorized to do that though, that's interesting. And that is just a bug I'll have to tackle, so let's memorize this. The important thing is that the addition of router module does now unlock router link again and therefore our component is working correctly again or this part of our app is working correct again I should say. So now we also outsourced the posts related things into their own module. Now let's move on to the off related module but before that let's quickly fix that error we saw. So back in the app, I deleted the old post. Let's create a new one. There is a bug in our app right now, which I overlooked previously. If I create a new post here, then we see we can edit it. And if I do change something, I can indeed successfully edit it as it should be the case. But if I try to save it without making any changes, I get not authorized. And this is probably thrown by the backend due to some other reason and not really due to us not being authorized. If we have a look at our backend now, here in the posts controller for the update post method, we somehow seem to get into this um, part here. Now this probably is the case because if we submit a post where we don't edit anything, it's not updating the post and therefore n modified indeed is not greater than zero. So let's console log the post here for one to look into that. And let's also console log the result to see if that assumption of the source of that error is correct. Let's save that and let's go back to our app and reload it. And let's try submitting this again. 
course, we get not authorized. And if we have a look at our server-side log now, we see this is the post which was created. And that is looking good. That's the most important thing. It's not missing any information. But indeed, n modified is zero here. Because Mongoose is clever enough to not override the post in the database if we didn't change anything. Our error message, of course, is a bit misleading because we're always assuming that we can only get there if we're not authorized. Now, what would be correct is to check whether we did find something. So if n was 1 and not just if we uh, did not modify anything. So the simple fix is to change n modified to n because this will just check did we find any post where we tried to do something. And that now can only fail if we're not authorized. It will not reach this code if we were authorized but didn't uh, update anything because we didn't change anything. So with this change in place, if we now go back and reload, I can now save the post and it works as before. So this is this tiny bug fixed, was overlooked before, should be working correctly now. With that bug fixed in the last lecture, let's go back to the thing we were working on, modules. We created the post module already. Now there's one other section we have and that's our off section. Let's create a off module too. Now in that off module, I'll put my off related components. By the way, if you're wondering why I don't put my services in there, it is recommended to inject services on the root level. Thanks to this add injectable provided in root thing, Angular will automatically load this in a very efficient way. And you can get unwanted side effects like different service instances if you do provide them on a module level. So really you shouldn't do that. Let's instead provide or declare our components there. So in the off module, I'll export a class off module and I will add my at ng module decorator. This decorator of course needs to be imported. So let's import ng module from at angular core. And with that, let's configure that decorator. Let's add declarations here. And which components do I want to declare here? Well, I want to declare my login and sign up component. So I will cut it from the app module and move it to my off module here. And of course, I will also need to bring the imports then. So let's go to the top of that file and use the login and sign up component import, cut it from the app module and move them to the off module. Here at the top, the paths need to be adjusted again because we already are in the off folder. So now this is looking good. The red squiggly lines here, by the way, can be ignored. This is just an IDE uh, display bug right now. This file is actually all right. So now we are declaring these components. Now they will require some other modules to work correctly, like the Angular material module, which we also should import. So let's add an import here, import angular material module from, and now let's go up a level and import the angular material module from there. We will also need that common module, which I also used before, which is imported from at angular common to unlock ng if and so on. And this module here, we also use the template driven forms approach. So we can actually remove the forms module from the app module and remove the import therefore entirely and instead add it to the off module because this is where we use it. So here I will add my forms module and also the import from at angular forms. So now with that, let's give it a try. Let's go back to the app and reload it. And we get an error that the login component is not part of ng module. Well, that makes sense. We need to add off module to our app module, of course. So here, let's import off module. And we need to add that import path. So let's import off module from dot slash off and there the off module dot uh, without dot ts, just off module uh, with a dot in between like this. So now we're importing this. And this is looking good. Now let's try logging in and see if that works or if we got any issues here. It's looking good. 
logging out, signing up, we can navigate to that page. So our application is now working again and now we also got that off module set up. Now we're not done yet though. We can use these modules for something cool which will not only affect our code as it is currently doing it, but which will also affect our runtime performance. Splitting the app into modules is great. Now we have a leaner app module, which is a bit easier to read, but we can also use modules to improve the performance of our app. And by the way, you might have wondered, how can we use the posts module here, for example, and declare something which we don't export if I'm always telling you that we have to export things we want to use somewhere else. And we are of course using the post create component and the post list component in our entire app through the router. Well, routing is something special actually. And that's exactly where I now will also continue working on. The router is managed globally, you could say. That is why we don't need to explicitly export the declared components to be able to use them here. And we can also use the router to only load code when we need it. For example, the login and sign up routes. We don't always need them. We might not need to log in or we might not visit them even if we could log in. So loading all the code for that, for these components and the attached logic in advance is a bit redundant. For the posts, it's a bit different. We typically need the post list and post create component. Now you could argue that we don't really need the post create component if we are not logged in, but in our current setup, let's keep it combined with the post list component and let's both load eagerly, so always at app startup, let's say. But for the authentication files, I don't want to do that. I want to load them lazily, which means only when we need them. And the Angular router makes this very, very easy. We can go to our off module and there I will actually add a off routing module .ts file. So I want to manage the routes for this module separately. For that, I'll export a class here off routing module, and this will receive the normal at ng module decorator, which we have to import from at angular core. So let's import ng module from at angular core here. And now in here, I want to set up my routes. So I will add imports and just as in the app routing module here, where we set it up with for root with that route config, I will set up a similar route config for my login and sign up route, which I will cut from the app routing module. I will set that up in the off routing module. So here I will add routes, which is of type routes, which we have to import. So that type is imported from at angular oops, router. And then I add my route config here. That of course means that the login and sign up component also needs to be added here. So let's still go to the app routing module and cut these two components from there, remove the imports there, that's important, and go to the off routing module now and add the imports here instead. Of course the path needs to be uh, adjusted, both paths need to be adjusted. And now we get the route set up here. Now we'll use the router module again, which also is imported from at angular router, but now not with for root, but with for child. This means we register some child routes, which will be merged with the root router eventually. And there I pass in my routes and then I export my router module, just as in the app routing module, the for child is the important difference. Now we can go to the off module, not app module, to the off module. And here I will import my off routing module, which of course means we have to add the import path at the top. Off routing module from, well, that off dash routing dot module file in that same folder here. So now the off routing module is added here. In that module, we define the authentication related routes. Now we go to the app routing module and here we have to connect that root router to that child router. And we do that by loading the entire child module. So by loading the off module, which then in turn is aware of its relevant routes. Because we're importing the off routing module, 
where we are clearly saying, hey, which routes matter for this child module, so to say. So this module knows which routes it needs and therefore we can connect it to our app routing module. I'll add a new route here with a path and now the path is a bit tricky to be honest. Um, we can't use login here because that path is already configured in the off routing module and therefore Angular would construct the path which is login slash login. But we also can't use nothing because that already is a path taken here too and we don't want to overwrite this. So the easiest way of handling this is to simply use a new group for that routes array here in the off routing module. So I will add a path of off, could also use user or anything like that. I will use off here. And now you don't set up a component, but instead you add another property, which is named load children. And this allows you to add a string here, which describes to the path you want to load lazily. So this is a path which starts in the current folder. And then we go into the off folder and there we have our off module. We remove the extension here and then add a hashtag after which we specify the name of the class in that file. Because you could of course name this anything you want theoretically, so you have to tell Angular which class it should use as a module in the file you're pointing at. So here copy off module and add this after the hashtag. Make sure you get the casing correct. Now all the routes registered here will be loaded lazily. For that to really work, I have to go to the app module and remove the off module here and also the import up here. Otherwise it would be included in our bundle and otherwise we would also actually mess up our app. So let's now save this and let's make sure we also adjust our links. In the header component, the login and sign up route can now both be found under off and then login and sign up. Now if that's saved, if we reload, we get an error if I try to load the login route because it can't find off off module. Now let's have a look at the app routing file. Now that's a slight mistake from my side. You have to use dot slash here to tell Angular that this is relative from the app routing file. So now if you click login, this gets loaded. And the interesting part is if you go back to the main page and you reload the app, if you open the network tab, Let's clear all requests. If you now click on login, now you see we have a new request and this actually is the source code related to the login and sign up components. And this is only loaded when you need it, which of course means you're not loading all the code, which you might not need up front. So this is now how we can add lazy loading. It makes of course way more sense for way bigger apps where you load big chunks of your app lazily. But here already you see the technique and it works the same no matter if you load 10 or thousands of components lazily.